Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Migration Dialogues webinar on Filipinos in the UK and COVID-19. My name is Marla Assis, Executive Director of the Scalabrini Migration Center, and I will be the moderator of this webinar. We encountered technical problems when we first aired on May 4, so our apologies for the glitch. And thank you for your kind understanding, and uh, we are glad to have you again. Our technical team has addressed the problems. We look forward to a thoughtful and interesting dialogue, hopefully unhampered by technical issues. Uh, before we start, I would also just like to acknowledge that we have a very transnational profile of participants joining us. I'd like to mention the countries where our participants are based. They come from the Philippines, of course, but also we have viewers joining us based in Hong Kong, Singapore, the US, Ireland, UK, Japan, Sweden, Uzbekistan, Switzerland, New Zealand, and Germany. Also, we are very happy that we have representatives coming from different sectors, from the academe. We have professors, educators, and teachers. Also, graduate students, researchers, representatives from NGOs and labor unions, international organizations, and research centers. I'd also like to say a special hello to our nurses and healthcare providers who are joining us from the Philippines, UK, and Ireland. So the Philippines is a country whose national life has been shaped by international migration in the last four decades. Filipinos here at home and the Filipino diaspora are not just spectators, but are as caught up and affected as the rest of the world in grappling with the ramifications of this pandemic. COVID-19 is disruptive and unprecedented in its global reach. And it is not only a health crisis, but it's also unraveling as an economic, political, and social crisis whose end is not yet in sight. This is the second of a series of webinars that the Philippine Migration Research Network and the Philippine Social Science Council co-organized to help us understand, reflect, and plan policies and programs in response to this epic crisis. The first webinar held last April 20 delved on the impact of the pandemic on Filipino migrants and remittances. Given the spread of the overseas Filipino population, a suggestion to highlight the impact of COVID-19 on Filipinos in different destination countries came up. There was a lot of interest to know more about the situation of Filipinos in the UK, hence this webinar. As a destination country, the UK has an international migrant stock of 9.6 million, or 14% of its 66 million population. The UK also happens to be the second largest destination of Filipinos in Europe next to Italy. Although Filipino nurses in the national healthcare system and other professionals and workers in healthcare are the most recognizable faces of the Filipino community in the UK, the Filipino community at this juncture is already a very diverse one. Since the UK offers a pathway for permanent residence and citizenship, the Filipino community in the UK includes those who have taken up UK citizenship and a growing second generation. This webinar is co-organized by the Philippine Migration Research Network or PMRN with the support of the Philippine Social Science Council or PSSC. Organized in 1995, PMRN is a network of mostly social scientists and professionals interested in advancing knowledge and understanding of national and international migration trends and developments. The PSSC, on the other hand, is a nonprofit organization of professional social science associations and social science research and, in, and instructional institutions in the Philippines. It has acted as the secretariat of the PMRN since the very beginning. We have one hour and 30 minutes, during which time we will explore the impact of the global pandemic on Filipinos living, working, or studying in the UK, how they are coping, and, and their access to support systems, including support from the Philippine and UK governments. We will have 20 minutes for a Q&A session. Please write your comments and questions in the comments section of this live video. 
we will be taking note of your comments and questions and we will return to them when we get to the Q&A later on. Now let me introduce our resource speakers. So I also would like to thank our resource speakers for, for their availability and for their take to um, appearance on our, web, um, on our webinar. First, let me introduce Mr. Jean Alcantara. Jean is a British Filipino journalist, storyteller, community leader, and registered immigration consultant. A longtime UK resident, he is also host of the multi-awarded Juan EU Connect of the Filipino Channel, a journalist for the online Pinoy portal Europe, and a trustee of the Mayang Filipino Gentle Touch International Charity. Gene did not mention it in his bio sketch, but I'd also like to add that he was conferred the British Community Honors Award in 2017 in recognition of his contributions to the promotion of inclusion of Filipinos in British society. We also have two registered nurses joining us in this conversation. They are among the Filipino frontliners of the national health system. First, let me introduce uh, Ms. Shello Romero. Hi, Shello. Shello used to work as a nurse in one of the biggest NHS hospitals in Southeast England. She's currently part of an NHS community healthcare group. She finished her studies in Catanduana State University in Vira, Catanduanes. She currently offers a free COVID-19 advice to the Filipino community in the UK, and we will hear more about this initiative later on. Uh, also joining us, um, but by email, and through her message is Ms. Nadine Opiniano. She is matron of elderly care at the, university, at the University Hospital of North Midlands Hospital Trust in Stoke-on-Trent. She previously worked as a nurse in Singapore before moving to the United Kingdom. She completed her Bachelor of Science in Nursing at Centro Escolar University in Manila. She is on duty as we speak but she was very gracious to share her comments by way of her written responses to our email. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Mr. John Dale Janala. JD, JD rather, is on his fourth year of pursuing a PhD in Earth Sciences at the University of Oxford, while on leave as a faculty member of the University of the Philippines, Diliman. JD is also president of the Philippines Oxford Society. Maybe you can show your t-shirt, JD. Um, a student organization that helps support Filipinos doing academic studies, as well as the discussion of, um, of issues related to the Philippines at the University of Oxford. And finally, I'm very pleased to introduce Ms. Amorfina R. Reyes. Um, she is the labor attache to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. As labor, attaché, labor, as labor attaché, she's in charge of overseeing the implementation of the programs and services of the Philippine government aimed at promoting the protection and welfare of Filipino migrant workers. Labat Ami has been in public service for 33 years. We had many interactions with her prior to her posting in the UK because of her previous roles as deputy administrator at the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration and as Assistant Secretary at the Department of Labor and Employment. So I think we can get started. And um, just to set also the context, uh, it would be good to have an overview of the Filipino community, what the Filipino community is like in the UK at this point. Uh, I'd like to address this question to Jean because he has lived in the UK for most of his life and has actively engaged with the Filipino community there. So Jean, uh, could you describe for us uh, what the Filipino community in the UK is at this juncture? And if you could comment also on the key changes that you have observed over time. Over to you. Salamat Mala. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Okay, so uh, maraming, maraming salamat Marla. Um, at marami salamat din sa PMRN and PSSC for inviting me to participate. Ano? Uh, actually, akala ko hindi mo babanggitin na ako na yung pinakamatagal dito sa, sa panel sa UK. So nandito na po ako ng mga 40 years. So medyo nakita ko na yung uh, development at takbo ng community natin. So may ilang slides lang po akong ihahanda para makita po ninyo. Sandali lang po. Yeah. Okay. Then. 
Nakashare na ba siya, Miguel? Nakashare na siya. Okay, anyway, so um let me go to the first one. So, uh merong mga 350,000 Filipinos in the UK. Okay, so nagsimula po tayong uh, mag-develop na relationship sa sa Inglaterra noong uh, mid, mid 1800s na masakop ng uh, Inglaterra ang Manila during the uh, during the Seven Years War uh, with Spain. And then siguro mula, mula ng panahon na yon, uh, nagpasok na mga Pinoy dito kasi parang nabuksan yung portal, no? Uh, kasi sa mga bandang early 1800s, mukhang nagpasok na may mga sailors from Cebu and Manila na natagpuan na po sa Liverpool. Nauna po yung mga ya, kina Jose Rizal, yung mga heroes natin na nagpuntahan dito ng medyo late 1800s. Okay, so uh, actually may libro nga pala po yung ano, kung makita nyo, libro ng pananakop ng uh, Inglaterra sa Pilipinas noon. Then, noong 1946, nagkaroon tayo ng formal uh, Philippine-British Diplomatic Relations. 1960s, nagpasokan na po dito yung mga sudyante at mga nurses. Uh, sila yung mga pioneers ng mga Pinoy's. Then, dumagsa noong 1970s, 1980s, yung mga tinatawag na service industry workers. So, yan po yung mga uh, domestic workers or housekeepers, mga trabahador sa restaurants, bars, at hotels. Then, noong pong mid-1990s, uh, merong mga limang po hanggang anim na pong libong Filipino nurses na ninegotiate ng ating yumaong ambassador, Cesar Bautista, na makapasok sila dito sa work permit. And then, uh, noong mga 2008, siguro mga, siguro mga 20,000 uh, students ang pumasok din dito sa UK para mag-aral. Uh, ibig sabihin, uh, nurse na sila sa atin, pero pumunta sila sa UK para mag-aral ng pagiging carrier. So marami sa kanila uh, na absorb na ng, uh, ng workplaces dito. Yung iba nag at nag-requalify ulit kasi nga nurse sila at may mga nakabalik na. At alam natin na hanggang ngayon, ang mga nurses ay patuloy na pumupunta rito sa UK. And then ito lang po, pakita ko lang sa inyo, ano-ano ba yung mga kategory ng Pinoy sa Britain. So palagay ko po, lahat halos ng uri ng Pinoy nandito. Kasi you can become a British citizen here. Pwede kayo maging indefinite leave to remain. Yan po yung mga under British immigration law. Pwede rin kayo maging permanent resident kung kayo ay European. So, ibig sabihin yan, yung mga Pinoy na Spanish citizens or, or Germans or Italians, pag pumunta dito, pwede sila maging permanent resident at maging British din. And then, yung iba po, if you like, ay mga uh, temporary or transient. No? Uh, so, ang kaibahan po nito is yung mga British citizens na ay yung tinatawag nating overseas Filipinos. So iba na po yung kategorya nila. Uh, yung mga temporary pa, iyan po yung tinatawag na overseas Filipino workers kasi maaring kontrata lang sila. Uh, yung tinatawag na tier 2, yeah, work permit. And then yung iba, uh, well, ang marami po dito, undocumented, uh, nabanggit na, may, may, well, mamaya pwede po natin pag-usapan yan. Uh, marami din po mga Pinoy's na nagpunta dito bilang turista or yung mga dati estudyante na mga nag, uh, nag-stay na, nag-overstay at maaaring hindi sila naayos hanggang ngayon. Okay, so yung pong question sa ilan ba talaga ang Pinoy sa Britanya? Kasi importante yung question po ito dahil uh, the more we are, the solid we are in terms of uh, a Filipino vote and our voice gets stronger. No? Ang pinaka-importante pong figure dito is from 1990 to 2016, uh, nabigyan ang 104,231 Filipinos ng British citizenship. So, so kung iisipin nyo na 1960s pa, nagpapasokan sila. 
eh gaano pa karami yung nabigyan. Okay? And then, paano yung mga anak nila? So, so may figure na binanggit ang Philippine Embassy before na five children, Filipino children, are born in the UK every day. Palagay ko po, out of date na yan. Pero halos dalawang libo yan sa isang taon. Okay? And then, yung mga turista, pag pumasok sila dito, sabi natin 12,000 a year, uh, kahit 10% lang ang hindi bumalik, naiipon na yan. Yung mga estudyante na nagpasokan dito, yung mga naging British na, palagi ko hindi na sila nasasama sa bilang ng embassy. So, all in all, mga 350,000 minimum. So, tayo po yung may pinakamalaking population sa Europe at sinusundan ng Italy na siguro mga 150 to 200 naman sila. So, very active po yung community natin dito. Uh, yung makita nyo, kakatuwaan, may pagka-religious din. Uh, ito po yung tinatawag natin barrier fiesta every year na malamang hindi mangyari ngayon gawa ng uh, COVID lockdown. Pero kahit ganun sila, marunong pa rin silang mag-care para sa mga issues na umaapekto sa ating mga kababayan dito. Tulad ng, uh, di ba, nagka-campaign para sa better treatment ng uh, ating mga housekeepers or domestic workers kasi yung iba kung traktuhin para mga slaves. Uh, pinoprotektahan din po natin ang image ng Pinoy's pag lumabas sa British media, medyo yung mga sexist, racist. Ayan po, meron tayong mga reklamo dyan. Uh, in terms of politics, siyempre, meron din po dito mga grupo na nagre-reklamo tungkol halimbawa sa extrajudicial killing sa Philippines. And then, uh, pinagtatanggol din po natin ang suveren suverenidad ng Pilipinas. So ito halimbawa, lagi kaming may rally sa harap ng uh, Chinese Embassy sa London upang uh, ireklamo na bakit nila sinasakop ang West Philippine Sea. Okay, and then uh, mamaya po itong, itong ibang uh, tungkol sa COVID. Dahil after this, ito nga po, biglang inatake naman tayo ng uh, coronavirus pandemic. Mala. Maraming salamat, Jean. I think yung siguro, if we can have a very, very uh, brief summary of what Jean has shared with us, I think what is also very clear is that the numbers have, uh, have increased. Although when it comes to migration data, talagang maraming, ano dyan, eh, maraming versions depending on the kind of definition that, that we use and depending on whether the estimate comes from the Philippines or the estimate is on the UK side. But I think one thing that is very good to, uh, one thing that we can really appreciate from what Jean has presented is that the Filipinos in the UK have very strong transnational connections to the Philippines, including those who have been there for a very long time and they continue to uh, share the the Uh, share the issues no, that are also important to the Filipinos here at home. Uh, I would like to turn to Labat Ami, no, because um, of course the Philippine Overseas Labor Office, um, which um, Labat Ami heads, ang pinaka focus po ng work ng Polo is really the um, is really the promotion of the protection of the rights of Filipino migrant workers in in the UK. No? But perhaps uh, Labat Ami also has some data from the embassy or specifically from the Polo. So if um, you can share with us um, the data that you have about the profile of the Filipino population in the UK and also um, the general experience of uh, Filipinos who are working in that country. colleagues there and to all the participants magandang hapon po sa ating lahat uh, let me just uh, share with you no as uh, earlier si Chin uh, shared a lot no uh, iba talaga pag matagal na dito no uh, well adapt and immerse in the situation here uh, as to the data uh, based on the date the latest no, the latest data that we have here uh, total of 192,799. But as mentioned earlier, it could be more. We have to do something about statistics. We all know that. 
based on the figures that we have, uh, permanent residents natin nasa 105,594. And uh, temporary is 89,500. But I think we have to take a little, uh, to take a look at little closer at the data on the temporary. Maaring marami na dito by this time are already permanent residents. There is a need to review this uh, data. But if you look at the, um, the data of our professionals, or rather in terms of skills, we can, uh, we can see uh, that majority are in professional level and then 57% yun, no? And then we have 19% na highly skilled, 15% na semi-skilled, uh, labor na 19%, and meron din tayo na DW. So yung mga tinatawag po natin na ating mga tinutulungan na domestic workers. Sa professionals ho, ang bulk ho niyan ay nurses, radiographers, we have engineers, doctors, uh, software developers, uh, meron din ho tayong teachers. And recently, uh, we have noticed the rise in number of our auditors, yung mga accountants ho natin. May, may demand sa kanila dito. And then the highly skilled group uh, composed of uh, laboratory technicians, yung mga chef natin, those uh, in construction-related workforce uh, like linemen, yung mga by Peters, and then sa semi-skilled ho, uh, we have uh, data on mechanic assistants, kitchen helpers, sa labor we have cleaners, and of course yung nani and domestic workers. Sabi ho dito yung, yung ating undocumented worker, the, the number could be a lot higher because we're really having difficulty in, in gathering data from them, which is understandable. Not, not all of them come to our office and say, oh, please include us in your, in your data. Um, marami hong challenges with respect to that. But the voice of uh, Filipino uh, domestic workers says that uh, I think mga 18,000 yan, no? yung mga undocumented natin, um, marami hong dyan ay dun sa data nila ay mga Filipino domestic workers. The next slide uh, will show us that in terms of uh, deployment, we have really a big bulk of nurses and healthcare workers. So based on the data uh, provided by the House of Commons Library in 2019, and I think this is still applicable up to present, no? uh, the Philippines ranked second in the most common non-British nationalities among the National Health Service or NHS staff with a total of 18,584 Filipino healthcare workers. 67% of those, of those uh, healthcare workers are nurses, 24% uh, are clinical staff, and 4.2% uh, belong to the infra support group. Uh, looking at the POA deployment statistics in 2018, you can see that 90% of the 2,339 new hires were nurses. So malaki ho talaga yung ating bulto ng, ng mga nurses ho dito and healthcare professionals. And we, we, we look at the Polo registered employment contracts in 2018 and 2019. Uh, out of 1,545, 47% uh, were nurses. It is followed by Accountants and auditors, mga 7.4% uh, percent. and the last uh, in the top three is the, the group of radiographers or sonographers, mga nasa 3.3% sila. As to working conditions, well, generally UK is uh, compliant with the uh, labor standards, no? yung mga ILO uh, overall regulatory and policy framework. And we, we have here the equality laws, the anti-discrimination and harassment laws, working time regulations, modern day slavery, minimum wage, maternity, paternity, and uh, very accessible ho dito yung conciliation and arbitration services and employment uh, tribunal. With respect to minimum wage, uh, they set the minimum wage here not based on regions or areas where the workers are but rather on the age. If you're over 25 years old, of course you get the, the higher rate, no? which is 8.72 per hour uh, since April this year. So every year, tumataas yung ating 
minimum wage. But in the case of nurses, depend there which bracket or band they belong. So usually tier two starts uh, from band three, wherein they get around 18,000 to 21,000 uh, pounds a year. And then if the, the higher the bond uh, group you belong, of course, the higher the salaries and, and other benefits would be. Uh, some common concerns of Filipino migrants here, ayan, narinig po na natin yung matagal na, when it comes to nurses, the major stumbling block remains to be the, the IELTS, no? or yung English language test system. But there are two types of examinations uh, accepted here by the Nursing Midwifery Council for purposes of registering these uh, nurses as professionals. The other one is the OET or the Occupational English Test. Uh, because of a government's representations and, and other sectors' representation, since 2018, um, the government has lowered the passing mark uh, for the IELTS. Before, uh, in, in each of the four areas, uh, nurses should, should reach the level of seven. But uh, since 2018, they lowered the passing mark uh, for writing, which became 6.5. But still, according to some nurses and the Philippine recruitment agencies, this remains to be a concern. If this probably could be more rationalized, there will be more uh, nurses that can possibly be hired and deployed here. And also the OSCE, you know, the Objective Structured Clinical Examination. This is a requisite for you to be uh, to be a registered nurses. Meron ho tayong mga flunkers dito sa OSCE. Uh, various reasons given by the nurses, but the bottom line is the IELTS, the, the OSCE, these are very expensive, no? So the, the costs are really prohibitive. So probably this is one area that, the, they, that we have to look into. How can this be more rationalized, not, not only in terms of the passing mark, but also in cost-wise, kasi yan ang isang nagiging concern. And recently, because of COVID-19, the lack of PPEs, the appropriate PPEs for those attending to COVID-19 patients. Ito ho ay, um, our embassy and our office have uh, made representation to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Sumulat na po ang ating Philippine embassy. And we raised this issue, uh, the lack of PPEs, appropriate PPEs for our nurses. And also the issue um, uh, raised by the nurses that uh, they are not uh, being prioritized when it comes to um, hospital accommodation, uh, admission, and also they, they don't have access, uh, especially during the first uh, few weeks no, that the outbreak here uh, has been a big concern already. So, hindi sila na prioritize for COVID testing. These are the things that we already raised to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. And uh, recently, we received a response to them that the they are attending to this concern. And in fact, uh, they have also, um, I think, called the attention of the National Health Service or the NHS to raise this uh, concern of move. not only, but do we, we it doesn't mean that there's a discrimination here. I just want to be clarified on that. This, are, this is the concern the, of most uh, nurses here, whatever nationality, whatever their nationalities are. So common concerns as in other countries, most likely. So now the government is um, implementing a three-strand strategy to enable them to provide these PPEs. And yesterday, there is a pronouncement as part of the, the new measures of the UK government that they are encouraging local manufacturers here, yung mga British industry, uh, para doon sa pag-produce of the PPEs. So hopefully uh, this concern will be resolved soon uh, with the with the incoming supply of these PPEs. But uh, uh, we are one uh, in saying that in, in our conviction that the safety and protection of Filipino workers and the rest of workers should be prioritized. And then the second concern is on the fishermen. Ito ho marami ho tayong fishermen, especially in uh, Scotland. No? Uh, the concern is the transit visa or joining ship visa. So this remains to be a biggest hurdle in ensuring their protection. Because the moment that they step on the shore, 
there's already a, a violation. So, medyo uh, nagiging concern ito. Like, in uh, one time, we, we assisted a group of five uh, fishermen. Uh, they were victims of physical assault, but because of the situation that they were experiencing in the vessel, the moment that uh, the vessel docked in um, some in uh, I, I think in Peterhead or or Fraser Bra, they they had to leave the vessel and report the matter to the police. But because of this transit visa, um, there the police considered a, there, that there was a violation, no? so the visa got to be revoked immediately. But eventually, uh, this um, the, the case against the the skipper uh, was uh, decided in favor of the Filipino fishermen. And then the third one is the group of domestic workers. After 2012, uh, there there's so much restrictions on domestic workers. In fact, there's Correct me, Chin, uh, but the, the visa being given to domestic workers are, is really non-extendable. And uh, most of the domestic workers coming in here are, are those uh, accompanying their employers. So hindi yung, you cannot directly hire uh, domestic workers from the Philippines. Ito yung may mga kasama ng employers dito. But after six months, they, their visas are, are not renewed. So this, uh, result in, this has resulted in huge number of undocumented uh, workers coming from these sectors. And when we know that if you are undocumented, of course, you are much less protected. Medyo, medyo ano yan eh, yan yung sector na prone to abuses. Um, but um, many domestic workers opt to stay, still uh, stay here because of, probably because if you compare the salary that they get here, it's, it's really much bigger than anywhere else. So, hindi ka nagbabayad ng tax. But of course, uh, the downside here is you don't have much access to social protection, which is very important. And then uh, recruitment of fraud. Uh, marami ho dyan sa atin sa Pilipinas uh, who have received uh, some invitations, job offers, but actually there are fraud scams. So we've been uh, repeatedly reminding our Filipino uh, job seekers to ensure that you you communicate with the POEA uh, just to check if uh, the one inviting uh, you and the, the group is really among those legitimate and licensed uh, recruitment agencies or accredited um, foreign uh, placement agency. So marami ho tayo. There's one, I think two or three cases already that even our own office and the embassy were used by these scammers. They made it appear that the communications came from us. Uh, it's good that some of our Filipino job seekers now have learned a lot. So instead of instead of directly applying and pay a huge amount of money, some of them even emailed us and also asked the POEA if these uh, offers are legitimate. So wag po tayong basta maniwala doon sa mga recruitment offers na yan. And then uh, very recently, itong COVID, no, yung pinag-uusapan natin, um, UK really is, uh, is uh, being battled by this um, deluge with these uh, cases. No? Uh, if, you can, if, you, if you see no, clearly on the screen, um, more than 220,000 already uh, confirmed cases here in UK. And the death number Hello, of the deaths is 32,000 already. Labat yes, Ami. yes, I yes. think that's, that's Sorry. all for now. No? Yeah, but uh, also next time, if you could um, use slideshow so that the so that the PowerPoint slide will be uh, clearer yes, to the yes, audience. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure, sure. Sorry to interrupt you. Yes. It's yeah. okay. Uh, can ah, okay. I yes. now? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so maybe slide. you can just give us um, Labat Ami. Yeah. Yes. If I may just request you to give an overview of the concerns of Filipino migrant workers now that the pandemic has set in. No? So if we can zoom in on the impact of uh, COVID-19 on the Filipino migrant workers, and then after that, um, I'll bring in uh, Shello also into the conversation because yes, she's one actually, of the health uh, that, that's what on I the am, front lines. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. yes. Uh, th this slide will show you the impact, no? In the impact of COVID-19. Ang laki kasi, ang taas dito ng number of cases. Every day, there are more than 200, 400 uh, number of deaths. Now, with, with respect to nurses, <clears throat> ito rin ho kasi yung, 
affected na nurses talaga ay group dito sa atin. So meron na tayong 242 confirmed cases and 27 uh, fatalities. So many of them are actually permanent residents and of Filipino descent. But recently there was one uh, OFW, no? He was uh, 33 years old who got uh, infected with COVID-19 and eventually died of this uh, disease. But it, it's go um, but uh, the employer the employer has been also assisting our our disease worker. And then when it impact when it comes to jobs, uh, ito who yung reported sa atin eh, But there could be more, as uh, Marla uh, said uh, during the first. Uh, the first uh, webinar that we had, it could be more, no? but this is the record that we have right now. So it's more than 3,660. These are the reported. So maaring marami pa hong hindi naka-report sa atin. So siguro I can stop no? uh, uh, from this slide and uh, we can proceed later for if there are some questions or some other information. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, maraming salamat, Labat Ami. Uh, yun nga ang nangyari sa situation ng ating mga kababayan sa UK. It seems that um, generally speaking, the working conditions are okay because uh, the UK, of course, adheres to many of the ILO conventions. But then when the pandemic set in, um, it uh, disrupted uh, the working lives of, uh, of everyone, including, of course, uh, the Filipinos that are based there. But the ones that have... Um, felt the impact most are the are those in the healthcare sector. So I'd like to um, uh, bring in Shello. Uh, Shello, kumusta ka? I'd like to ask Shello kung kumusta yung kanilang naging trabaho. No? If she can also share with us what was her work like before the pandemic uh, came up and then what is the situation now and how they are adjusting to the, to the challenges. Shello? Before I answer your question, Marla, I would like to thank the Philippine Migration Research for inviting me to be one of your speakers. Um, before COVID arrived in the UK, uh, my work, um, I was a clinical site manager of one of the biggest hospital in southeast of England. So my work involves in running the hospital smoothly and safely. So we've seen that the COVID-19 started from Wuhan and then it traveled in Europe. The trust in this um, country um, made a contingency plan to avoid death. So they have, they made sure that we won't reach the peak because of the danger. We created I believe most of the NHS hospital created capacity because the problem before COVID is we have a lot of patients waiting. So our hospital and our, our NHS hospital has always been full of patients. So if COVID would arrive in the UK that we're not prepared and the hospital would be full, then a lot of patients would, the health would be compromised. We would have a lot of death. So we tried our best to vacate most of the beds. We have patients who's been in the hospital for a long time. We discharged them. We tried our very best. We have meetings and meetings just to, just to make a plan to, to prevent, to flatten the curve. That's what the word that we're always using before the uh, pandemic arrived. So I believe I was one of those staff in the hospital where I work who been um, successfully made that thing happen as we have emptied a lot of bed way before the COVID-19 arrived. We have empty beds, which never happened in my four years as a clinical site manager. So we were so much prepared. We have fit testing, how many times we've done the fit testing in 24 hours even in the night we test all the stuff just to make them ready we created pod these pods are the rooms that we have created for patients who have symptoms so they are not patients who dial 111 once they have the symptoms of covid19 
and they go to the pod. They're not allowed to go to any for the danger that they might actually pass it on to others. So the government has very, very careful and I've seen that because I was part of, 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 of that program. So when the COVID-19 arrived, we have this Excel, we have created a lot of beds. As, as everyone knows, it was all over the news. And so we were so much prepared. We continue to work as I myself continue to work as a clinical site manager. So we have patients and they, we, we have the guidelines that if they have symptoms and it's not critical, they just have to stay at home. And once their health has been compromised and we have a red flags, which we have to follow when the symptoms has become life-threatening, they need to seek hospital, hospitalization to be treated properly. So um, from then on, I moved to a different level of my career. Uh, on the 6th of April, I became a senior urgent care practitioner. So we're catering community patients we work hand in hand with 111. So part of my job is to actually um, give COVID advice calls, apart from seeing patients in the base, seeing patients, treating them and um, discharging them or referring them to a specialty. So at the moment, on that moment in time, I believe we hit the peak, which we tried to avoid. Mm -hmm. because everybody can see on the television and the news about the number of deaths every day. But at the very moment in time, we are now going down. So that means um, the deaths are far less than when we were on its peak. The amount of patients on the peak, we, we don't have much patients in the hospital. They just stay at home. Now this, the patient starts coming in. We have, mm. we've seen patients, they're now starting to queue up in the hospital. Um, so what we're still dealing the same, but we still, I believe this, this crisis would not stop in a few weeks. It would last, on my own opinion, maybe for months. We still have cases, but it's not us like, three or four weeks before. So our, our pandemic still not finished. We still have to continue to, to fight for this unseen enemy. And we have to keep ourselves strong, especially me and my husband, who is also a frontliner. Um, Thank so you. I think Shelo, maraming salamat sa iyong pagbahagi. Siguro at this point, I'd also like to share what Nadine has uh, shared with us. So Nadine, uh, as we mentioned earlier, is matron for elderly care. Um, at ito yung, uh, kasi yung tinanong namin siya, ano yung kanyang mga initial experiences nung bago pa lang yung COVID. No? So this is what she wrote, and I'll read, and I think it's also shown in your screens. One of my bedded wards was part of the COVID ward provision for the trust. The ward staff had to learn every day and adapt to the best way of working in dealing with COVID patients. We had to adjust to the demands of the patients and take into consideration the safety of the staff as well. I was faced with multitude of staff who were worried, which is understandable, and I needed to assess my own resilience and self-awareness, as well as to empower staff and keep us together, reassuring them that everything will be fine. It was hard. I go home tired, hungry, mentally and emotionally drained, that sometimes I don't even realize I am crying in my sleep. So um, I think she was really able to capture you know, the, the, the fact that you take the work back with you even when you're mm -hmm. already home. No? Pero nung tinanong din po naman namin si Nadine kung ano na, uh, kumusta na siya ngayon and uh, you know, um, after that uh, very initial experience of um, you know, count, um, in encountering you know, COVID patients and really being there on the front lines, sabi niya at this point, ang kanyang pinaka-greatest na challenge is really the staff because um, she has uh, 58 staff 
who tested positive and there's one in ICU. And on a day-to-day -day basis, ang medyo mahirap daw doon sa kanila is really to keep the social distancing. So she has taken, um, she, ha she, she went to the extent of buying a two meter, what's this, a two meter uh, rod so that uh, she can maintain the social distance. At yung nabanggitin kanina ni Shelo na marami na rin patients na pumapasok sa kanilang hospital na non-COVID cases. No? So they also, of course, have to attend uh, to other patients who have to deal with other types of illnesses. So uh, kanina nabanggit na, I think uh, Labat Ami was also starting to discuss about the cases, uh, um, um, the, the fatalities, no? the death cases. No? Uh, kasi ang observation, and it's not only in the UK, but also in other countries, including the US, na parang, ma, ma, parang Filipino nurses and healthcare workers seem to have a high uh, rate of uh, fatality. No? Parang uh, they are represented in fairly large numbers among the number of uh, uh, healthcare workers who have died, but maybe part of this is also because, of course, there's many of them, no? marami sila. But some sectors are also saying and have also commented na baka part of it may also have something to do with the fact that maybe Filipino nurses are given the more uh, dangerous types of work. Uh, they are exposed more to COVID patients and maybe they also have less access to some support. So I don't know uh, what would be your take on that um, Cello, maybe Labat can also comment, or also Jean. So, uh, Cello, maybe I'll start with you first. Thank you, Marla. I would say the uh, PPE or personal protective equipment is one of those reasons, but it's a global crisis. I believe each country is experiencing the same. Yes. Um, so, and the, I read about the reason why a lot of Asians and a lot of Filipinas been affected by this COVID pandemic. Now there was, it was on the news about the black Asian mm -hmm. ethnic minority, mm -hmm. which is B-A-M-E. So we are classified as B-A-M-E. So there was a study that the background that we had as a part of BAME has a low vitamin D level, which could have been the cause of the death or when we had a COVID, we are blown by this virus. So our, our, our immunity is far low because of the low vitamin D in our system. There was a um, write-up of an article that I read, which was written by Dr. David Grimes. Dr. David Grimes is a consultant um, physician and gastroenterologist in, in the UK. He wrote down about the, um, the vitamin D level of the, this BAMI group and how COVID-19 impacted on their health. So um, according to the study, because of our brown skin, it's been shielded when we go out by the UV from the vitamin D came from the sun. So this, this study um, proved that because of the melanin in our skin, we have the pigmentation of the skin, it's actually shield the UV, making us all low in vitamin D level in our blood. So, and this, this study as well said that we, our behavior, we, we try to avoid the sun. We tried to hide because our complexion, we wanted our complexion to be white. Mm -hmm. While the British people go out and expose themselves from morning till the <laughs> till down just to get the sun, sunshine and plus their skin is white which easily penetrated by the vitamin d so they are relating the vitamin d of this bami group to be um less that's why our immunity is too low to fight the covid19 virus so I've, I've read how many articles i 
I watch on the news and they're saying the same um, song, like it's the vitamin D of this BAMI group. So it's still under investigation. And last week I watched the news, it's in Sky News, that the NHS England, um, he's the C, uh, chief executive of NHS England, wrote a letter to all hospital bosses to risk assess the staff, especially this BAMI group, in order for them to get protection. And it seems that they are so caring for all of us because of the um, high death rate of all the BAMI groups. So I was really surprised when it happened. And then two days ago, I read an email of, um, in, it's a generated email in, in the NHS hospital that the, um, it was an email from the um, human resource chief executive for all the BAMI background to report to occupational health to check their vitamin D level. And if it's mm -hmm. low, they would provide a vitamin D medications or, or vitamin mm -hmm. D tablets. So Thanks. It, yeah. been, it could have been evidence-based and now they believe on it. So it's still un been under investigated, but I have a strong feeling that it's about, one of the reasons is about our vitamin D level. Thank you. Body. Thank you, Shello. Uh, can we hear from um, Labat Ami? Um, because I think you mentioned earlier that there has been some discussions, um, yes. yeah, especially with regards to some of the safety precautions, like the issue of the PPEs, etc. Uh, are there other issues that uh, you think uh, you need to pursue uh, or to discuss with the UK government uh, with respect to you know promoting better safety and protection of uh, our healthcare professionals? Oh uh, yes. Uh First of all, I just would like to add uh, to the response on the question of whether the Filipinos and Asian group or, or other uh, non-British groups are intentionally, you know, are intentionally um, being exposed more uh, to COVID patients. I, I don't think that is really what is happening, you know? uh, because as I mentioned earlier, whatever the treatment to, to the nationals here are, should also be the, the same treatment to be given to to the foreign migrant workers under their equality law here. And whatever privileges and uh, employment rights uh, and, uh, for which the workers here are entitled to should also be the same employment rights and uh, benefits that other foreign migrant workers should also enjoy. So it's really a concern on the PPEs. Um, this, is, this is really an unprecedented uh, problem. And I think uh, many countries have been caught flat-footed in this case, and the lack of PPEs is, is one of the major uh, concern of many countries, including UK. Of course, we didn't expect it at first, considering the NHS is uh, one of the most advanced uh, healthcare service in the world. But as I said, we are in extraordinary situation. So uh, we, with respect to possible discussion with um, the UK government, uh, prospectively, one of course is on the health and safety of our workers. And then second, I think that there has to be a review na, na, when it comes to other terms and conditions of their employment, like the salary and uh, other benefits. And of course, uh, some protective um, measures uh, for not only for the nurses, but for the for the general workers um, all in all. No? So marami ho kasing uh, concerns dati, but uh, what is being highlighted really now is on health and safety. The rest of the concerns, while this have been uh, discussed um, before, there are things that have to be reiterated to them, like the rationalization of some of the requirements for our nurses, the so many, um, some nurses are saying that there are so many charges um, that, that they have to shoulder and um, the situation, their current situation has to be given uh, more attention now by the UK government uh, because in the past we did hear much uh, concern with respect to nurses except that 
because of the lack or uh, the big vacancies, the big number of vacancies on uh, of the nurses and healthcare workers, of course, our Filipino workers get to to to, to be exposed no, to to more work and um, over time extension of services. And if there are, uh, ang, ang balita kasi rin namin, if uh, there were cases that um, the hospitals need people to volunteer for overtime work, most of the time, it was really the Filipino workers. Tama ba, Michelle? Oh? It is most of the time, yes. you know, it's really yeah. our Filipino yeah. volunteer. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, the, the patients are so fond of our Filipino nurses and even the employers, not only because they are very skilled, they are very good, at, uh, the way we we handle the patients, but more importantly, they said that it's it's really different when Filipino worker or the Filipino nurses attend to them because of that genuine concern. No, yung sabi natin na uh, may malasakit, no, may malasakit. So damang daman nila yung kaya talaga really uh, the Filipino nurses here are favorites, and you have heard it from the media, from the employers, and from the other sectors how they commend really our. Filipino nurses and healthcare workers here. Thank you, Labat. Ami, uh, Jean, um, okay. uh, what can you say? What's your take about uh, the cases, uh, you know, uh, that, that many of our nurses are getting ill and uh, there's quite a number of them that have uh, lost their lives in the line of duty? Okay, let me just share this uh, slide. Did it come out? Okay, right. So, um, okay. So, uh, actually, I, I made a list of all the people who have uh, lost their lives during this pandemic. Okay, so there are in this list um, 20, 30, 40. So, that's at least 40, no? So if you look at, at if you look at their pictures, you will see that not all of them are nurses, not all of them are health workers. Some are domestic workers. There are drivers. There are just husbands, if you like. Uh, so ibat ibang klase ng Pinoy, no? Uh, but of course, the majority are apparently from the healthcare services, mm -hmm. kasi uh, pag nurse ka, you really have to do the job of a nurse and attend to, uh, you know, dangerous patients. Uh, I, you know, we've all heard the arguments about lack of PPE and so on. And we know that's true because uh, uh, one of the guys who died, uh, this guy, um, uh, John Alagos, Very he good. died at uh, Northwick Park Hospital because of lack of PPE. And he's a young guy. And uh, I think the boss said, you know, you have to work at this ward. So now this raises the question, kasi kung Pinoy ka, uh, do you really have the courage or bravery to refuse your manager? Lalo na kung ikaw ay temporary pa lang yung visa mo dito. Kasi baka siyempre matakot sila na ay baka magalit or uh, hindi i-renew yung visa ko. Plus, may sinasabi sila ay nakakahiya naman kung hindi natin gagawin. Uh, and then they also have the the attitude of bahala na. Okay, so so I, I I think this is something that we also need to inform the community about. So kung hindi ka talaga, uh, kung hindi ka pa resident dito, hindi ka pa British, uh, you need to know ano yung rights mo. Kasi if you're going into a really dangerous situation, Who's going to protect your health? Nobody. It has to be you. So will the government help you? Will your line manager help you? Will the trade union help you? So uh, although kung titingnan mo dito, mga, I understand mga 56 na yung namatay na Pinoy, no? 50, 50 plus. 50 plus, yes. 50 plus. It's uh, compared to the 40,000 who have died. Actually, napakaliit lang naman na proportion. Although for us, that's a big proportion. And uh, it's, it's everywhere, lalo na ngayon yung mga care homes. Now, sa care homes, uh, 
mostly Filipinos are are doing you know care caregiving jobs in private care homes and what they call domiciliary jobs in private homes. Yun, yung mga yan, minsan yung protection nila, they also rely on the government. Pero pag namatay sila, wala man lang silang compensation. Because I don't know if you've heard that the government has announced that there will be this 60,000 pounds compensation to the families of uh, nurses. So like, um, like uh, Ken and this lady Amor, so mga nurses sila, this guy Don, and this guy uh, uh, John. So they'll be given, and this guy here, Ruben Munoz, who was a nursing assistant. So they will be given, uh, their families will be given 60,000 pounds if they can prove that in the past two weeks before they got infected, they were dealing with a COVID-19 patient. That's good. 60,000 is equivalent to maybe two years salary for some people. But the problem is that's only offered to NHS or public service bodies. Walang ino offer sa mga private carers. Diba? So, for example, uh, this lady here, uh, si Princesa, you know, I understand she's just a private citizen. So, sinong magbibigay sa kanya ng pera? So what people do is they set up GoFundMe or Just Giving uh, websites. So nakikita ko ang dami naman nagbibigay. Uh, in one case, uh, naka 14,000, uh, 7,000 pounds. They help. Pero kulang, ng, uh, kulang pa rin ng tulong. So uh, we can try and do as much to protect ourselves. So alimba ako, uh, uh, medyo ano po tayo, medyo lampas na po tayo ng senta. So, nagtatago na po kami sa bahay. So, we're isolating. We rarely go out para maprotektahan yung sarili namin. But nurses or healthcare workers, they can cannot really do that kasi that's their job. So, we need to get the government, push the government to do it and for, uh, well, for people to uh, understand that, you know, this is not, this is not a very safe job to do uh, and get maybe the unions because they like uh, unison for example i know they have policies but they have to push it para ma protect uh, hindi lang yung mga nasa nhs but also in private care homes Marla. uh thank you hello yeah salamat jean no so uh, may mga ginagawa naman, pero yun nga, nabagin ni Jeanette that there are also some workers that are uh, sort of uh, neglected no? in terms of um, support that the government can, can also provide to them. Siguro babasahin ko lang yung some of the reflections of Nadine no? concerning this issue. Kasi sabi niya, um, um, I must say that it is not only Filipinos who are working longer hours. Every NHS worker has pledged to give their all in our daily battle with COVID-19. And she also mentions that there are studies that are being done at present about the BAME, the Black Asian Minority Ethnicity, ethnicity Group, being more susceptible in catching COVID-19. So all those belonging to this group had to have a separate risk assessment to determine whether they are safe to work in a COVID area or needs to be redeployed to a less to less risk areas. No? So, meron din mga ginagawang pag-aaral na rin tungkol dito. No? Um, siguro, uh, lilipat naman po tayo muna sa um, ibang profile ng ating ng, ng mga Pilipino na nasa UK din. And at this point, I'll uh, let's turn our attention naman to the to, to JD. Um, uh, kasi yung among the Filipino temporary migrants in the UK are some 700 strong uh, Filipino students pursuing tertiary and graduate studies there. No? Uh, in the case of our overseas Filipino workers, they can turn to the office of Labat Ami should they mm -hmm. encounter problems. Or in the case of British Filipinos, they can of course turn to UK institutions no, to mm -hmm. present the problems and maybe seek assistance, particularly in times of crisis. But in the case of Filipino students, kumusta naman kaya sila? No? So, if um, if they have problems, uh, like uh, ano yung nangyari sa kanila now that the uh, how has the pandemic affected them? 
um, and if they also have some sources of support. No? So to shed light on these questions, uh, JD, uh, can I ask you, uh, kumusta kayo sa Oxford? Ilan ba yung mga Pilipino na estudyante dyan? And how has the pandemic affected uh, your student life? Yes, uh, thanks Marla and thanks to everyone for the discussions on the welfare of the Filipino workers here in the UK. Of course, I mean, our primary concern must be them because hey, a lot of the hard work is uh, being done by them. Um, but on the side of the students, um, there are some concerns as well. And I guess before I start talking about those, I'll just give a short background about myself and uh, my involvement in the student community here in Oxford. So. I'm in my last year now of doing my PhD here in the University of Oxford. And I'm also the president of the Oxford Philippine Society. And in, a, in our society, we have around 20 members. Uh, and I must say that maybe not, we don't have all Filipinos in the university as members of our organization. Uh, but at least for our uh, society, we have 20 members, five are undergrads and then uh, 15 who are postgraduates or doing uh, postgrad diplomas. And then among those, we have 13 from the Philippines now who actually came from the Philippines and then moved to the UK to do their studies. And the rest are either British Filipinos or uh, uh, other half uh, Filipino nationalities from other countries. And then we all we have around eight PhD students here in Oxford who are, are most of them have various scholarships either from the UK government or from the Philippine government or from other uh, non-government organizations. So here in the University of Oxford, we have, uh, we are now in the third week of the uh, last term of the school year. So, and all the teaching has been done remotely. So all supervision, lahat ng tutorials uh, are done online and a lot of the departments have depended on some of them have recorded lectures and I've heard that some faculty members have had to record lectures in advance before the term started. And I think one of the main challenges is uh, we don't have any physical contact with one another. And uh, of course, for a lot of us know enough for students, for young people, it's really important to socialize, you know, to develop your network. And we also don't have access to facilities like our laboratories or the libraries uh, where we can do our studies. And a lot of the time we're just stuck in our room na mag -isa lang, or uh, sometimes if we're sharing a house or a flat with other people, so we have interaction with other people sa mga kusina or sa uh, living area, ganon. Uh, so my counting social life naman. Uh, and so far, uh, for Filipinos who, are, who moved to the UK, there were some concerns in terms of the accommodation kasi uh, uh, at the beginning of the lockdown, there was some strong advice on like, should we stay in the UK or should we move back to our home countries? And it wasn't clear if we could continue living in university accommodation or not. But eventually that was resolved, at least here in Oxford, uh, the university said uh, uh, international students can stay in university accommodation, uh, even if they're, you know, they're also trying to minimize the staff who are working in the colleges and in the dorms. Because, to uh, practice social distancing measures. Uh, they also need to protect the staff. But of course, um, uh, the university has been trying to emphasize that you know they're operating on maximum compassion. So if we want to do or if we need to do something for our own welfare and our own needs, uh, that will take priority and they will try to uh, ensure that it will not affect our grades or our kind of standing and they will do anything they can to support uh, what we're doing. JD, yes. Mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, in terms of support, uh, maybe social support or maybe other types of um, support that you might need, who do students turn to? Yes. So, Basically, you're just independent. Yeah, a lot of that, especially well, at least here in Oxford, we have the Philippine Society, so uh, which has been around for since 2010. So we have our peer group. Now we can chat online. We can talk to each other. And then I emphasize to our members, now, you know, if you have any problems, if you need anything, uh, don't hesitate to email me. And uh, buti naman, they uh, approach me and they ask me questions. And then if it's something I can help them with, I can uh, talk to them about it and, you know, brainstorm anong pwedeng gawin. And then there are also support services in the university, which 
help uh, students manage like uh, anxiety and worrying and uh, if they're worried about you know how they can progress in their studies uh, ganon. and then uh, the university has also set up some hardship funds although it is admittedly a bit limited um, there's some provision uh, kung if you're ha having a financial difficulty you can uh, apply for the hardship fund because especially for students like me uh, na a final year na uh, we should some of us should be finishing na pero because of the lockdown we probably won't be able to travel out of the country or we don't know when we can travel out so, so we will have to stay here and uh, wala yung scholarship ko ubos na wala tanong ko ano pera para makatira dito and to continue living here so uh, so there are some funds but uh, it's unclear yet uh, how much support we can get uh, in terms of uh, uh, securing our finances while we are here in the UK. Uh, and then uh, some students have approached me, you know, are wondering, okay, uh, gusto kong umuwi. Uh, who should I go to and what can I do if I want to go home? Uh, uh, and again, ayun nga, kung wala ka ng pera dito sa UK, uh, uwi ka na lang, di ba? Pero paano nga? How can you go home? And uh, it's not entirely clear uh, where we should go and how to do it. Uh, although, uh, at least for my part, uh, since the organization I mean, has been around for a long time, we have connections with the embassy, but I've been talking to other students in other universities then, like uh, other students, uh, Filipino government uh, students na nag din dito sa UK, uh, parang hindi nila, hindi sigurado kung saan pwede mag-approach or sino pwede kausapin to ask for support in terms of those things. So, uh, yeah, I think we could benefit some guidance on like, you know, what can we actually do and where can we go to for those kinds of things. Uh, thank you very much, JD. And maybe if I can just follow up, I don't know if it's uh, okay to ask Labat Ami, yes. but, uh, but like, for example, Labat, uh, are students, uh, can students also access repatriation assistance? I don't know, maybe but, it's the ATN that would... Uh, yes, I think it's more... It's more ATN, ATN matter, but, right? Yes, but in, in general, definitely, the Philippine Embassy and all of us are from the Philippine help every Filipino worker, uh, every Filipino, not just the Filipino workers in general. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I think the Philippine Embassy also posts a Facebook account nila yung mga advice on like overseas yes, Filipinos yes. on what to do. Um, but yeah, but I think because the students, uh, some students don't know where to go, uh, it's important to be able to develop this network of communication uh, where the information is easily shared uh, to everyone. So thank, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, we have to attend to some of the questions and comments that were provided, uh, that, that were uh, forwarded to us. Um, ano bang nakalagay dito? Please. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, maybe Labat Ami, no? Um, can you talk a little bit more about some of the assistance and uh, programs and support that the Philippine government uh, extends? Labat? Uh, yes. Um, would you like to? Add yes, yes. I'm okay, thank you. I, I'm, am I? And I'm being seen now? No? Yeah. Okay, yes. Uh, let me just uh, share with you. Uh, some of the initiatives of the UK government now and also the Philippine government to assist our Filipino workers uh, and the workers in general. Um, this one. Okay, on the side of the UK government, um, there is now a, a job retention scheme that has been uh, implemented where the workers can get 80% of their wages up to 2000 per uh, 2,500. And then there is a self-employment income support scheme uh, that is also uh, being provided to, to the self-employed. The same amount actually is uh, being given to them. And uh, earlier, uh, Jean mentioned about the 60,000 uh, pounds uh, being given, to be given by the government to families of healthcare workers who died of COVID-19. But we're just waiting for, for the guidelines on this, especially now that uh, we have uh, a number of Filipino workers uh, who, who also succumb to COVID-19. 
But uh, on top of that, um, many uh, employers here also provide assistance. Like in the recent case, uh, there was a 5,000 um, pounds uh, grant uh, given to the family of, of one of our uh, Filipino workers who died of COVID-19. With respect to the Philippine government interventions, um, we have been implementing the DOLE ACAP financial assistance of USD 200 for displaced workers. Ito po yung mga nawalan ng trabaho. So ACAP means abot kamay ang pagtulong sa OFWs. Uh, meron ho kasing eligibility criteria. One, I just would like to clarify, this is really intended as a one-time uh, financial assistance for those who lost their jobs, whether temporarily or permanently, because of COVID-19. And uh, second, they have not been uh, receiving any assistance, financial assistance from the government or from their employers, and they are not covered by furlough program of the UK government. So far, we have received 397 applications and 160 workers have already been paid and more to be paid uh, today and uh, the coming days. And then another form of assistance is the OWA financial assistance of $200 also for confirmed COVID-19 infected OFWs. Ito ho yung mga members nila na nagkaroon ng COVID and upon presentation or submission of a medical certificate or the result of the swab test, they are also provided with USD $200. So far, so far we have paid $120. Workers. Another thing that we have been doing is distribution of food relief to displaced workers, to PUIs, and those uh, confirmed COVID-19 infected OFWs. We do this in a partnership, of, of course, with the Filipino communities and some social partners. And so far, we have assisted um, uh, more than 700 workers. And kanina, there's a, a question dun sa chat group, no? If there are uh, sea-based workers or seafarers uh, being stranded here. Yes po, marami pong na stranded dito uh, because of the COVID-19 situation and travel restrictions, uh, especially uh, in the Philippines and, and some other areas. Ang UK kasi is still open to flight. So, nangyayari, we, we have become the transit area, no? Uh, and for those who, seafarers, um, affected, uh, we have repat repatriated uh, more than 2,700 workers. And I think there are still around 400 uh, or more than 400 that are who are currently stranded is in Southampton, uh, UK. Marami po dyan sa mga naapektuhan ay uh, workers in um, in cruise ships, no? So, hindi natapos yung mga contracts nila. But while they are still here, they are supposed to be paid their salaries by their principals. And we have been doing the coordination with the principals and the Philippine Manning Agency. And even the repatriation is also done uh, through the help of this uh, group, plus, of course, our Philippine Embassy. And uh, now, there are 10 workers, land-based workers currently stranded, Ito yung galing sa Caymans Island and Italy. So while they are here, uh, their accommodation is uh, being shouldered by the Philippine Embassy. And we also, we've been providing uh, food for them and some other assistance. Uh, ito ho yung mga ginagawa natin, no? yung partnership natin with the Filipino community. Yung gathering of information on affected Filipinos. Alam niyo kasi dito sa UK is very strict yung implementation of the data privacy. So you cannot just get any personal information. Sometimes even if you call the hospital, they won't give you anything unless you have a clearance from the patient or from the NOK. So with the help of our uh, kababayan here, the Filipino communities and other partners, we're able to get some of the informations um, who among the, the, the sectors are affected uh, by this COVID-19, who are the PUIs, who need food assistance and other interventions, who need uh, counseling and so on and uh, so forth. Kanina nabanggit yung mga initiatives ng Filipino community. Totoo po yun. Ah. Marami ho dito nagpa-fundraising to help the families of uh, Filipinos who died of COVID. Nagdi-distribute din sila ng mga food sa ating mga frontliners. And they have been helping us. No? Sabi nga kanina ni JD yung mga dissemination of information. Uh, so they, they share this, uh, this information released by the UK government, by the embassy and the FOLOWA. And of course, some, uh, some Filipinos even sponsored holy masses for the frontliner. So yan po yung mga, um, mga pagtutulungan ho na ginagawa dito sa 
sa atin. No, yung sa ACAP po, open pa po yung, apply, yung, ano natin, yung applications natin dyan. So, kailangan lang sigurado na nawala ng trabaho. In fact, and the, and most of our uh, uh, workers whom were able to assist uh, through the ACAP are, are those belonging to the domestic uh, work sector. No? Marami ho rin dyan yung mga naging undocumented uh, Filipino workers. Eh. Kailang-kailangan nila yan kasi because for sure they're not covered by the furlough program of the government. Uh, thank you, Marla. Thank you. Thank you, Labat Ami. And also for, for the rest, I'd also just like to mention, no, kasi may nabanggit din si Nadine na, sabi, na sana, sabi niya, maybe there could be better support network to the Filipino community here. No? Mm -hmm. uh, and she's based in Stoke on Trent. No? Ang sinasabi niya na most of the support network seems to be present in London. Mm -hmm. But in other cities such as Stoke on Trent, we are left on our own. So maybe that's also a reminder to yes, uh, yes. Polo, to our embassy, and also to other community leaders that uh, you know to also pay attention to Filipino communities in other parts of of mm -hmm. uh, of, of the country. Um, I would just like to read uh, a few questions that are um, that our viewers also sent. There's actually a lot of interest on data issues, no. Uh, ano ba daw yung proportion ng Philippine migrant uh, population compared to other migrants in the UK? I think we need to check on uh, ONS data for, for, mm -hmm. for that type of information. And there was also a question about uh, ano ba daw yung share ng Filipino, my, uh, Filipino healthcare workers compared to other healthcare workers. I think mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to NHS, uh, Filipinos are the third. Tama po uh, we are the second, no? non-British. Second. We are second. Okay. The, the, first the first one is Indian, okay. India, and then the, the third one is uh, the, the Irish nurses. And then I think there's a question for Jean. Tungkol dun sa migration, I think, Jean, you mentioned that you will address the question about immigration. Yes, yes please. Okay. So there, there, <clears throat> so thank you, Mala. So there, there is a question from Jeff Clark. Uh, his wife is Filipina in Manila and he's a British citizen in the UK. They have all the paperwork ready for her to come here, but of course the lockdown happened. Is there any way the visa can be processed? Well, basically, uh, Jeff, you should just get everything prepared. You can still apply for the visa online, pay the fees uh, at the British Embassy, including the what, what we call the immigration health surcharge. And then when the uh, visa application centers open in the Philippines and elsewhere, then she can submit everything, give her fingerprints, and hopefully she'll be joining you soon. Thank you. So I, I think I'm afraid we don't have time to cover the other questions and comments. And I think at this point, I would just like to request our speakers if they can share with us some of their final thoughts. So maybe we can start with, uh, is it okay to start with you, JD? Yes, sure. Oh. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, basically for the rest of the other students, if there are other students watching this, um, I just want uh, you to know and you know, make sure to maximize all the support services available to you, made available from by the university, and also re reach out to the Philippine Embassy because, uh, in my experience, they're quite responsive to requests and questions. And if you have any concerns in terms of your, your student visa expiring soon or uh, some students uh, transfer from a student visa to a tier two visa so they can uh, work here uh, in the UK, um, it's not yet clear exactly what's the, what is going on with that, but there is a website, the UK, UKCISA or the UK Council for International Students Association, uh, and they post there the advice for uh, all the concerns for all international students in the UK. Maraming uh. salamat, JD. Shello, some final thoughts and reflections from you? I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And I hope they've got a lot of uh, information from all the speakers. Um, I would like to tell um, all the Filipino people and those who watch us to just continue to follow guidelines. The government knows what to do. So we, the frontliners, will still continue to fight against this unseen um, enemy up to the end. 
And I'm hoping and praying that one day the sun will shine again to us and we would heal and we would build as one. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shalo, for those very encouraging words. Uh, Labat Ami? Well, uh, una -una, th thank you, Marla, and everyone for having us here. Um, I just would like to point out four things. No, One is on a positive note, uh, the character of our workers, especially uh, the frontliners during this pandemic, uh, shown brightly. So once again, napatunayan natin how, how could and uh, how well our assistance is um, coming from the Filipino workers. And then second, the Bayanihan spirit of Filipinos in times of crisis uh, has also been well demonstrated. So many volunteers, no? uh, so many people helping each other, even if we don't ask them, they, they just ask us uh, what, what, can they, what can be done to help the, the embassy, to help the POLOA, and to help our Filipinos here. Nabanggit kanina yung katakot-takot na mga ginagawa nila. And third, uh, I think we all really have to give priority to, to health and safety, especially in workplaces and everywhere. Uh, this is a must now for everyone. And there are lessons learned uh, in this crisis that should also not be forgotten and should uh, have their way and find their way into the government's policies, uh, programs in partnership with the various sectors. And uh, lastly, um, we, we, we have to be strong. The crisis, as mentioned earlier, may not be soon over, but uh, we always have to find strength in God and in every one of us and the Philippine Embassy and the Polo Owa and the rest of those who are here and our Philippine government in general, even in the Philippines, no, uh, we, we are all here to assist, to do the best that we can. And of course we cannot do it alone. So the partnership with the Filipino community and other sectors is really very important. And from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much. And to all our healthcare workers and nurses, you have done so much. Your dedication is truly commendable and we are so proud of you. And we always pray for, for your safety and health and the welfare of the Filipino workers in general. Maraming salamat po sa lahat at magandang hapon po dyan at magandang umaga pa rin po dito sa ating sa UK. Thank you, Labat Ami and uh, Jean. Your okay. Uh, yes. Uh, so it's just good to mention that, uh, as uh, Labat Ami mentioned, also the gov UK government uh, is actually helping with this with this furlough scheme. Uh, furlough scheme po yan ay uh, instead of salary, they're paying eight, up to eighty percent of people's earnings. So people do not worry if they lose their job, for example. And they extended that mm -hmm. until October. So kung kayo po ay proper empleyado, then, uh, you know, you have the lifeline to the UK government. Although, of course, it's good to see na the Philippine government through Polo particularly uh, also help the, you know, the, the Filipino community in many ways. No? And she's already enumerated that. Uh, I just want to mention briefly for JD's uh, benefit, uh, international students, particularly those who finish their course, are able to transfer to a tier two visa. So, you know, that's something that you will need to pursue. Uh, marami tayong mga kababayan dito na nagtapos dito ng masters or PhDs or whatever, and they are now part of the, well, part of the UK. Uh, frontliners, I think we know that you are valued, especially now, no, when this, this, uh, this uh, pandemic happened. Uh, one thing I would like to ask everyone is now to become assertive. Don't be timid, kasi pagka, <laughs> pagka timid po tayo, hindi tayo nagko-complain, hindi tayo nagre-reklamo. Yes ng yes, Filipino yes, although ibig sabihin is no, maybe. Uh, then uh, baka po mapahamak yung buhay natin. And then, uh, actually, ito pong pandemic na ito is a test for the Filipino community. Uh, nagtutulungan ba tayo? Yes, maraming examples. Uh, 
madiskarte ang Pinoy. So marami ng mga Pinoy ngayon, nagbibusiness sila. Delivery ng mga pandesal, delivery ng mga groceries. So they turned it into a money-making you know, uh, 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 event, if you like. And then uh, one thing I'd like to say is uh, sana pagka natapos lahat ito, uh, we need to honor all our dead in the front lines and in the community kasi lahat sila biktima ng uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic. Ayun uh, lang po, marami salamat sa lahat. Thank you. Uh, babasahin ko rin lang po yung message ni Nadine. No? I don't know if it can be flashed, but in any case, I'll read it. Sabi niya, this pandemic made me realize that there are people who will leave you in the middle of your battle, but those who will stay are the ones who will stand by you till the end. I am proud to say that in my patch, whatever race or religion there is, we all stood by our pledge to Florence Nightingale. We have signed up for this, and we will see this till the end, if there is one. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to be tired. It's okay to be grumpy. It's okay to cry as long as you refocus your attention to the reason why you come to work every day. Yes. For me, I come to work for my staff and my patients. I cannot give up as I, I cannot give up as if I do, my ship will sink and I may not be able to keep it afloat again. I need to look forward to being able to go back home to see my family again, and hence I have to get it right for the NHS. Very, very brave words from one of our health frontliners. And um, I would just like to thank um, before we wrap up because we are coming up, we are coming um, to the concluding part. I would just really like to thank all our speakers, Jean, JD, Shello, Labat Ami, and also Nadine, uh, for sharing your time and your insights and your experiences with us. Um, please be, uh, please keep well. No, ingat po kayo jan. At uh, ingatin po yung ating mga kababayan. Um, I'd also like to thank the officers and staff of the Philippine Migration Research Network and the PSSC for making this webinar possible. Many thanks to our team, um, Mr. Miguel Caraan, Ms. Ena Tagiam, and Ms. Wilson Villones of PSSC. You don't see them, but they're the team who have been, uh, they're the team members who have been working behind the scenes, helping us with the preparations and taking care of the webinar's technical needs. And uh, to all of you, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your comments and questions. For those who would like to view or replay this webinar, our recording will be available shortly on PMRN's Facebook page. Please tune into this page for announcements on future webinars and other PMRN activities. Meron pa pong isang request, no? Lastly, to our viewers, to help us improve our webinar offerings, please accomplish a feedback form. The link will be flashed on your screens and also will be posted in the comment section of this video. So once again, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Please keep well. Let's not tire of aspiring and building a more inclusive, more just, and more compassionate world for all. Hopefully very soon. Ingat po. Thank you. Thank you very much. Salamat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marla. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Marla. Ingat kayo lahat.